what we need, the pressure we are facing now is because over 80% of what we consume in this country is imported into this country. Well, we're not seeing the handwriting on the wall for us to really address these naughty issues that you have pointed out. You see, they are not naughty issues because we've let it link for too long. So it's difficult. We've not been able... Look, the challenge in Nigeria was not always stabilizing the exchange rate. Remember that we started from, at a point it was 130, went to 150, mm -hmm. it went to 250, he went to 360. Right. Now, there's always this process when there was a time that when it goes to 130 to 150, you see that it stabilated at 150 for a long time. Mm -hmm. Was well, an external shock in terms of like what we experienced in terms of when President Buhari came in, I remember, we're doing, I think it was 189, 180-200 during that, that, the tail end of good luck, Ibele Jonathan tenure. And when he came in, because price of crude has gone reasonably low, the price of crude at that time was about to going as low as um, $30, $30 per barrel. We saw um, 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 the exchange rate, I mean, the, the exchange rate went high to 250 And the president then said he was not going to devalue the currency. Mm. At that time, the World Bank and other were saying, look, the Naira should be exchanging for 250 At that time, we're doing the managed exchange rate. And then he came in, he said no, but it took a while before he agreed, and he took it to 360. But before he got to 360, remember that it has moved to 505. And when the, the then acting president met with the CBN governor, they now came up with the import-export window, and that what brought it to 360. It was there for a very long time. Then COVID came. We lost it all. We couldn't control it up to this moment now. COVID came again, but they were shot for Some level of stability. Though. Yeah, those stability. See, when you, we always do the short-term measure of making stability, but we don't look at the long-term implication. Okay, what causes this instability? There was an external shock. Mm -hmm. What causes that external shock? We're not attracting enough effects into our economy. How do we start attracting that effect so that we won't get to that shock again? Let me give you an example. When the economy of the world went on war research in 2008, the exchange rate was still stable because at that time, that was during President Obasanjo's time, our reserve was about $100 billion at that time. And crude oil went up to as high as $120 per barrel. But we had the war chest to maintain it. So we were able to maintain stability in that exchange rate even at the time that the market was going through, the world economy was going through crisis because we had a robust uh, uh, um, 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 reserve. But as it stands now, we don't have a robust reserve. So we are seeing those challenges come in. The CBN cannot intervene because if you look at the CBN auditor report, you realize that if you look at the auditor report, they, they, are, they are obligations to payment and everything, you realize that they don't have more than $3 billion. So, so on what grounds is, uh, sorry, is the CBN governor saying that uh, this year we'll see um, a decline in inflation to 21.4%? I think he's doing that based on, he, if you watch that statement, he said you see an increase, decline to 21.4%, and then the next statement he said that will stabilize the currency. Mm. So it's tied down to stability. Like I said, if the, if the CBN knows it, that we need to stabilize the exchange rate. Once we subscribe the exchange rate, it will come down. Now, you look at well, how do we end effects into our economy, we need to really look at that side critically and then address it. We need, like I've talked about foreign direct investment, portfolio investment. Then we we'll talked about um, crude oil. Sir. Then we we'll talk about remittance from Nigeria from diaspora. At the point, remittance from Nigeria from diaspora was more than the amount of crude oil sales. But when COVID came, a lot of them are just going back. And when you have this exchange rate parity, they are not coming through the bank like they used to come in. They rather come in through other means, and then the digital platform will be presented to them globally. Mm. So you need to see how you can begin to attract FS1. And if you look at it, portfolio based investment, like I said, 15 years low, they are not coming. Um, 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 foreign direct investors, they won't come if you don't create stability. We are still battling the price stability. We are still breaking economic in, in instability also. They won't come. Then if you look at oil, crude oil as well, thank God we are improving on that. We hope to get to 1.5. I think they see the, 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 the OPEC quarter was this year, 1.53 million barrel. We are doing about 1.3, so we still have a shortfall of 200, but we hopefully we should get there. So when you look at that, if we don't address these four areas, to attract effects through these four areas, we'll continue to have the challenge. What advice do you have for consumers now? Um, 
food prices on the rise, and of course SMEs. I think we need to look at local local manufacturing, local. Um, We're not there yet. We are not there yet. So it's a, it's a big tax because is the environment conducive. Because yeah, because cost of production is high. Cost of gases have gone up. So that when you look at local consumption, uh, local production, what is making local production more expensive than foreign production? It's just, um, it's just because of cost of production. Um, diesel, because we don't have power, most of all these plants are run by, 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 by general set. And this generation set, uh, some of them are diesel. And diesel are today selling at over 1,000. So that is why I'm excited about the coming industry of Dangoche refinery, Maybe, maybe by the time we start having um, Portaco refinery, Dango T refinery, the pressure on the NMPC to bring in um, refined petroleum product will ease. So most of these cells, most of these funds will not find their, their hand into the, um, um, the, 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 the foreign reserve, and then we'll be able to have a robust reserve because at that time we are doing local refining of our petroleum product. Will and will it affect price of fuel in Nigeria? I think it should. It should in the long run. In the short term, we might not see that immediate that gap. But let me tell you why I think it should immediately is because when you look at the charges that usually they charge when they bring in this crew to Nigeria, landing, cost. landing costs, it will not be there. It will eliminate landing costs, so it should bring down the cost. But whether it will be, well, it may be major, I don't think so yet because, again, that monster comes in cost of production. So, Dango Telefiner is still going to be the one that will provide power for themselves. Mm. So what really is the value of the Naira, if we're talking about the value? Well, I want to look at the import-export window to say, though, well, the value of the Naira as it stands today based on demand and supply, the import-export window, import, or autonomous foreign mark, uh, exchange market, I think it should, be, it should not be more than um, 850. I still stand to be corrected. I think the Naira as it stands now is grossly the undervalued. Even on the official rate, sometimes it gets to 1,000. That has to do with the supply side, the demand side. And you see that sometime before the end of it, it gets back to 800. And I think the CBN also have said it, that through the National Assembly, that in the pact, they exchange it at 800 naira between the naira and the dollar, which I think is probably reasonable. But what we are fighting now are market forces. Market forces will always take advantage. And that's why most people were saying, don't float the naira if you don't have the liquidity, because market forces are speculators. But if you have those liquidity, you get your hands burned.